Good morning. This is Michael Schultz, and uh, I just thought I'd go ahead and put together a brief tutorial. Um, I'm here in Atlanta, and a, a friend of mine here at a conference asked me how to select objects in Photoshop easily. Um, and the main brunt of his question uh, consisted of how to take objects like the one I have in this picture, this horse, um, and get the fine details of the selection, like the hair. Um, if anybody's experienced in the uh, selection process in Photoshop, a lot of times you'll use either the pen tool or the magic selection tool to try to get the best selection you can. But when hair comes along, um, like the hair that's on this horse, um, it can be nearly impossible to select, uh, isolate every strand. Uh, so I just wanted to give you guys a brief tutorial on how to get uh, the emphasis on that hair, um, how, to, how to get a good selection. Um, now, obviously, the, the general selection, like the, the curves and such on the horse, are easy enough. So we're not going to really be focusing on that as much as the hair. Um, in fact, this process um, does cut out some of this other stuff, but it really makes the hair pop. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you how all of that works here. Um, now you can see I've got a really high def image here, and this works for low def images as well. Uh, Photoshop has become more and more sophisticated over time, and it's just amazing what it's able to do these days. Um, so what I went ahead and did was I loaded this picture of a horse, and this is the, the picture uh, that my buddy had actually uh, had me work on with him. So I just wanted to show you guys how I did it. Um, so what I did was I loaded this up, and you can see I've already got a selection going on, but really all I did was, if I deselect here, uh, is I used the lasso tool, and I just dragged around very general selection, nothing real sophisticated. All I had to do was really just uh, select that. Um, so, uh, and you don't have to be too detailed. You, you'll notice that my selection isn't, isn't very close to the horse's face or hair or anything like that, just as long as you kind of isolate the horse from the rest of the background uh, enough to uh, make it... Uh, make Photoshop know what you're trying to select. Okay, Now when you're done selecting, uh, w there's this really cool new tool that photo Photoshop gives us and they've, they've sophisticated it uh, since uh, Photoshop uh, CS5 came out. Um, and I think Photoshop CS5.5 is actually uh, has actually got a better version of this. Uh, but I'm going to show you what uh, CS5 can do for you. All right. Um, now when you've got this lasso tool selected and you've already made your selection, all you have to do is go up to this Refine Edge button. Um, now you'll see that I've actually, uh, I actually went ahead and duplicated my layer just in case uh, I screw anything up or I need to grab any more details out of the original image. It's always good to have a backup. All right, uh, so I'm selecting my top layer, uh, my duplicated layer. I'm hitting re Refine Edge, and you'll notice right off the bat that it already cuts this out. This is just a preview. It hasn't already cut it out for me. It's just a preview of what it will look like when I refine the selections edge. All right, uh, and what's really cool is. With the click of one button, you can make this image do some amazing things right off the bat. And you'll notice edge detection. Edge detection is a cool new feature that Photoshop has. Um, and all you have to do to make this start working for you right away is press the radius slider and bring it up. I'm going to bring it up halfway, and you can see already that it's isolated a lot of the uh, the hair strands um, and given us a lot more detail. It's not as, as sophisticated yet as I'd like to show you, but you can see right off the bat that just sliding this up to 50 or 37 percent or 37.5 pixels rather uh, has isolated a lot of the strands and brought out the background. And you'll also notice that the hoofs, which are uh, have have a white tint to them, have actually uh, been deselected, and that's where our duplicate layer will come in handy because we'll be able to extract the hoofs um, and uh, be able to apply them properly as opposed to uh, cutting them out. Um, but it's really the, the strands of the hair that you'll be interested in here. So let me see if I can zoom in here and show you exactly what's going on. I'm going to keep bringing this radius up and you'll notice that the, that the background is being extracted. You'll notice that you will lose a couple of hair strands. A, a, little, bit of, uh, a little bit of the background is um, still showing, um, but as you adjust the edge, uh, these different selections, for it, it, really, it really depends on what image you're using, but this Refine Edge selection tool has really uh, benefited uh, me in a lot of different ways. Um, rather than trying to select it all and, uh, you know, select the blues and try to extract those, it's really a complicated process and this Refine Edge tool has given you the power now to uh, select things properly. All right, and you'll see as I zoom out that the uh, quality is just amazing. As I just go ahead and 
pop a couple of these values up and show you exactly what's going on here. You can feather it. I don't recommend feathering it as it does bring a lot of the detail down, uh, but you'll notice that it does add kind of a cool effect to it. Um, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of that myself, but it may work for your image. Um, and I'm just going to keep bringing this up. All right. I've got a selection that I think is going to work for me. Um, let me actually bring that down just a tad. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you'll notice that my selection has changed. Uh, it's brought everything closer. And uh, now I can just go ahead and uh, hit uh, Command Shift I, which is invert selection. And so it's now, instead of selecting the horse, it's selecting the background. Um, and when I hit the backspace button, it should delete my background. Let me actually make this invisible and give myself a black background to kind of show what's going on here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and put my black in there. Okay, and so you'll notice that um, the background, there's still, there's still some light back there, but you'll notice for the most part that the strands have been isolated. And once again, you're going to have to play with the settings to get it exactly right. Um, but as you throw this into other backgrounds, like um, you know a lighter color such as green, you'll notice that you can't really tell. Um, and this this will be the case most of the time, um, but once again, just play with those settings and see what works for you. Um, and if you lose quality in different areas, you can duplicate the layer and use your eraser tool uh, to bring in a lot of the a lot of the details that you've lost. Um, but once again, these strands of hair have been isolated quite effectively. So um, this is a tool that I found beneficial in a lot of different aspects, and uh, I'm just hoping that it works for you too. All right? Thanks.